Hey guys, CJ with Elevated Systems. Today we're checking out the Framework mainboard case by Cooler Master. This gem was unveiled a few months back during Framework's massive 2023 launch event amidst all the hype surrounding enhanced batteries, matte screens, and of course the much awaited Ryzen mainboards and the Framework 16. This little plastic case might have not grabbed your attention, but let me hit you with this. Could this unassuming case be the dark horse, a more impactful product than anything else revealed? Well, that's the question we'll loop back to in a bit. First, we've got to answer a simple yet crucial question. Is this Cooler Master case worthy of your time and dime. So today we're gonna go all in with our tried and tested case review format. We'll check out the specs and features, see how it fares in the ease of installation department, and of course, put it through the rigors of thermal and performance tests. And no review is complete without some comparison. So we'll be stacking up against our other mainboard enclosures from Framework and even some I've got in my own collection. All right, let's jump into this review. Just a heads up, I got my hands on this motherboard case directly from the Framework Marketplace, no review or pre-production sample. It's the actual retail version. However, what I got has a few differences from the pictures and descriptions on the website. So let's take a closer look and see what's what. First things first, let's talk about the specs and feature. This case comes in at a size of 297 millimeters by 133 millimeters by 14.9 millimeters thin. It rocks a light gray ABS plastic bottom shell paired with a clear tinted polycarbonate cover, which differs from the black and transparent combo shown on the website. You also get a rubber case stand and fastening studs for visa mounting. It also boasts a mechanical power button, front and rear intake ventilation with top exhaust and 100 millimeter VESA mounting point and spots for mounting Wi-Fi antennas. Now let's dive into the assembly. This case is held together by eight screws and that's where things got a little tricky. Cooler Master decided to go with Torx T5 screws, the same size as the one Framework uses for their laptop. So if you got the Framework screwdriver, you're golden, right? Well, not quite. Turns out that the framework screwdriver is more like a T4.5 than a T5. To make matters worse, two of the screws were over tightened and I ended up stripping one of them while trying to remove it. Thankfully, I had my trusty iFixit kit on hand complete with a genuine Torx T5 bit, so I was able to get all the screws out. Once you've got the screws out, it's time to crack this case open, take the spudger end of the screwdriver and carefully pry off the top, keeping in mind that there are plastic clips on the sides and bottom of the cover. With the top off, installing the motherboard is a breeze. Just line up the mounting points of the board with the metal posts and drop it in. On the left side, you have the option to install the audio module, and on the right, you can add a Wi-Fi card. Sadly, my unit didn't come with the Wi-Fi module bracket as promised. Luckily, the internal Wi-Fi antenna I'm using stays securely fastened to the card, but you can also opt for a standard external Wi-Fi antenna or wait for Framework's antenna module to become available. Here's an interesting thing. The motherboard isn't physically secured inside the case. Instead, it's held in place by screwing the cover back on. This explains why there are eight screws for the cover. Thanks to the dual-sided intake vents, you've got options for placement. You can lay the case flat on your desk, or prop it up using the rubber stand, or attach it directly to the back of your display or VESA mount. To do the latter, simply screw in the mounting bolts into the VESA mounting points on your monitor and hang the case. However, keep in mind that not all displays have both a stand and a separate VESA mount. My LG display, for example, has its stand attached to the VESA mount, leaving no room for the case. It's also worth mentioning that while many displays, including my Samsung and LG testing monitors, have 75 millimeter VESA mounting points, this main board case only supports 100 millimeter spacing. Additionally, most VESA mounts typically come with a plate that screws directly onto the device, allowing it to attach to an arm or wall mount. However, this case is designed doesn't quite accommodate that standard setup. Just something to keep in mind when exploring your VESA mounting possibilities. Okay, for those of you who will be using the framework mainboard outside of the laptop without a battery connected, there are a few things to know. Firstly, the CPU can draw up to 64 watts of power by itself and the total board consumption 
can approach 90 watts. Consequently, the standard 65 watt framework charger isn't going to suffice. So you'll want a minimum of a 100 watt USB-C power supply. However, unlike when I first started experimenting with the framework mainboard like two years ago, it can boot and run stably with the 65 watt charger, you'll just be missing out on a significant amount of performance. It's also important to note that at least based on my last experience, you can't update the BIOS without the battery connected, so bear that in mind. Continuing on with setting up the Cooler Master Framework desktop, the expansion cards fit perfectly into the case, including the thicker Ethernet card. The locking mechanism and release worked as expected. Currently, I have a USB-C, USB-A, and DisplayPort card installed. For testing, I'm using the Nectech 100 watt USB power supply, along with a basic wireless Logitech mouse and keyboard, and a Samsung 4K 60 hertz monitor. The main board I'm employing is the 12th gen i7-1260p with 16 gigs of DDR4-3200 memory running Windows 11 in high performance mode, which by default sets the CPU PL1 to 30 watts and PL2 to 64 watts. To test the thermals, I'm taking the average of three 10-minute Cinebench R23 multi-core benchmark runs, which will provide us with thermal and power numbers, as well as actual performance values for comparison. I'll be comparing the Cooler Master case to several setups, the main board in the laptop, the main board completely bare, and the 3D printed framework main board case from their GitHub repo. I did a full video on this a while back, and just for fun, I'm using my CJ64 machined aluminum keyboard enclosure and my custom main board and GPU enclosure. For a typical PC case review, we usually focus on maximum CPU temperatures. However, that approach doesn't quite work with the 12th and 11th gen Intel CPUs used by Framework. These CPUs are designed to immediately spike to 100 degrees Celsius as they boost to their PL2 power limit. Following this, they'll reduce as close to their sustained PL1 power level of 30 watts as temperature allows. The cooler the CPU can remain, the longer it can sustain the power level of 30 watts. The phenomenon is nearly always consistent. The less heat, the more power, except when the motherboard has additional power to draw from, which is why in the laptop chassis connected to USB-C power and the battery, although it has the highest average temp, it still has one of the highest average power consumptions. For instance, compared to the open board, the laptop maintains significantly higher average temperatures, but its power consumption remains roughly the same. The takeaway here is that in most situations, removing the battery equates to a slight performance downgrade. Another outlier here is the GPU enclosure, which uses a different power supply that doesn't consistently deliver a full 100 watts. What we observe when the power supply is identical, like in the open main board through the CJ64, the lower the average temperature, the better. The Cooler Master with its insulating plastic and sealed clamshell design tends to be the warmest of all. This translates into the lowest Cinebench scores for the Cooler Master case, trailing about 7% behind the bare board and 4% behind the 3D printed case. So what does this mean in practical terms for everyday use cases? It's essentially nothing. I added those charts and the info because my core framework audience tends to demand in-depth data, but unless you're using the main board as part of a render farm or maybe a dedicated transcode system, a 7% difference in Cinebench doesn't mean much in terms of performing tasks like web browsing, productivity tasks, or media consumption. For the workloads this system was designed to handle, you won't notice a difference in any of these enclosures. However, what you will notice is the noise. Both the 11th and 12th gen main boards are loud, especially the 12th gen, which often spins up for no apparent reason. You can hear that loud little fan in all of these cases. The Cooler Master case, though, adds a little something extra in the form of a high-pitched whistle. 
The worst part of it is that the whistle is mostly present at idle speeds and it seems to get better when the fans ramp up. I actually have significant high frequency hearing loss from my previous job, so I no longer hear the whine, but I'm not exaggerating here. One of my dogs has her bed right here under my desk. And as soon as I started Cinebench with this case, she jumped up and left the room. I assume it's something to do with the specific shape or geometry of the intake vents. I tried positioning both standing and lying flat and it's slightly better when lying flat, but the whistle remains. Maybe it's due to the thin air at 7,000 feet here in Colorado. Hopefully that's it because the high pitch noise would really prevent me from using this case as a desktop or media center solution for my main board. So do we have a better solution? Perhaps the 3D printed case? Well, not really. The problem with 3D prints, aside from the fact that most people don't own a 3D printer, is that you have to deal with part shrinkage or heat warping. For example, this ABS case I printed last year has shrunk to a point where the main board doesn't even fit in it anymore. If the board had been in here the whole time, it likely could have been damaged as the case shrunk. ABS filament has a higher glass transition temperature, so the board heat isn't gonna start melting or deforming it, but has a higher shrink rate after printing. This is a PLA case I printed at the same time. It didn't shrink as PLA has about the lowest shrink rates. However, this board can hit over 150 degrees Fahrenheit, which is above the glass transition temperature for PLA. So this case has a high possibility of deforming over time. And my enclosures are just too expensive for the average consumer. For example, the manufacturing and components for the CJ64 cost me over a thousand dollars the gpu enclosure is still an early prototype but hopefully i can develop it into a practical and affordable solution so stay tuned for that but really that leaves the cooler master case it's a mass-produced retail solution available at a reasonable cost considering it's definitely a lower volume of product it's a durable case. The injected molded plastic isn't gonna shrink or warp. It precisely fits and protects all the components you can add to it. There are a few areas for improvement, better quality control to ensure the fragile screws aren't over tightened. It could use a more universal visa solution and some exploration into the design to eliminate the whistle is needed. And if someone from Framework is watching, you guys should definitely update the website with images of the actual retail version. However, regardless of whether I or anyone else thinks this is a good or bad mainboard case, the fact that it exists is the more significant point here. This marks the first time we've seen a significant third-party product on the framework marketplace. Cooler Master is a multi-million dollar company with a huge influence in the custom PC market and modding community. And buy-in from companies like Cooler Master is what's really going to help elevate framework from its very specific niche into the mainstream. It starts with a simple plastic case and hopefully expands exponentially. Just imagine being able to jump on the framework marketplace and being able to buy a LTE expansion card developed by your carrier and manufactured by their subsidiaries, or shopping for an upgraded AMD, NVIDIA, or Intel graphics card for your Framework 16, made by MSI, ASUS, Gigabyte, PowerColor, PNY, or any of the big board partners. I track a lot of questions aimed at Framework, like when are you gonna make a touchscreen display, or can you improve the trackpad? My question is, when is LG or Samsung going to make a touchscreen or OLED display for framework? Or when is, I don't know, Logic Tech going to make a replacement keyboard and trackpad? Maybe Corsair can make some cool Stream Deck modules for the Framework 16, or Bose could put out some top-notch replacement speakers. Perhaps Cooler Master could produce a deeper bottom chassis and a more robust, quieter CPU cooling solution for the Framework 13. Okay. Maybe I'm in fantasy land now, but you get my point. Framework is a small company with around, I don't know, like 40-ish employees, 
but they put out a good product with an even better philosophy of building long lasting, repairable and upgradable consumer electronics. Their overall goal is to challenge the mentality of disposable tech pushed by the tech industry, which seeks to maximize profit at the expense of consumers and the environment. But in order to accomplish that goal and produce industry leading products, they'll need buy-in from larger, better resource companies. It started with Intel, then AMD, and now we can add Cooler Master to that hopefully growing list. All right, folks, I can get long winded on subjects I'm passionate about. So I think we'll wrap this one up here. Thanks for watching. What will be the last review style video I do for a bit because we're shaking things up and taking this channel on a whole new journey. Don't miss the next video for all the juicy details. But if you have questions about anything from today's video, just pop them in the comments below. I'll answer what I can. As always, be sure to smash that like button and I'll see you in the next one.